Now I'd like to request our honorable chief guest, the Director of Public Health and Preventive Medicine, Government of Tamil Nadu, Dr. T.S. Selvaminayagam to deliver the presidential address. So good morning. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, so in fact, uh, it looks like a more of an uh, alumni meet and uh, thanking the teachers getting their blessings for the event. It's a great uh, event, sir. And I especially thank uh, our friends Raju, Prabhu, Vijay Kumar, Shankar and all those people who have made this event in a shortest possible time. So they could conceptualize it, they could do it, bringing such a international uh, speakers in one go. See, and sometimes we also used to organize international conference where there will be one or two speakers from the country and we call it international. Now here, almost every university from US is represented here. It's a big thing and South Asian universities are here. It's a really international, which they could able to do it here. And one more thing which I noticed when Vijay Kumar was speaking is that most of the speakers who attended here put their all their efforts by themselves all the resources, all the efforts is done. It's really exceptional that shows your interest in the science, which we can definitely, it's a big thing to the country. South and Suninga, it's really thing. It's a good appreciated, sir. And uh, my association with this uh, society starts with uh, Raju. Uh, Raju, though he is, we called him one of our uh, employees, not so. Uh, he is uh, such a guy who really do many things. In fact, uh, I don't want to speak about the science here. You're all knowing experts. The only two things which I want to mention in this conference. The one is that we should be in a position to convert every challenge into an opportunity. And second part is the collaboration. Opportunity per se, he was heading the, our state public health laboratory, which connects around uh, almost 38 districts he connects. Mainly does the job a uh, surveillance. And when the COVID aids, he was taking care of the, our RT-PCR lab. See, he used to take around 3 million tests, not one or two number, 3 million tests. In fact, this is the lab which has done maximum number of tests in the state. And it's not only that, he need to coordinate more than 200 labs which are functioning within the state. So that's the enormous magnitude potency he had, which he could able to bring when there is a challenge of COVID strikes. It not only stops there, we have done a four rounds of zero survey in our state where even ICMR, in fact, we could do it much, much before even ICMR able to do it. It's be, basically public health unit is an administrative unit. So it is not a research unit. We are the program implementation units. I have more than 2,000 primary health centers functioning under my administrative control. This is an implementing unit. We could do the zero survey. It's not stopped there. We could able to establish a whole genomic survey event in our institutions. In fact, this is the first state to own a WGS facility within themselves, within the campus. See, this is able to bring the variance which is happening in the COVID. See, the big advantage with us is that most of the research institution, they can do what they can do within the campus. But we have a big advantage of linking it with the epidemiology. The clinical features, the impact which he creates in the community, we could be able to link this. So this is a big advantage, we could do it. And with this only, as he mentioned in the beginning, he could be able to come out with more than 12 to 13 international journals documentation in a short period of one year. See, this begin, one more thing is, he could be able to do this mainly because of the cooperation support done by each and every one of you. See, most of, I remember still Vijay Kumar, you could be able to bring most of the experts. See, when you've done a zero survey, we couldn't document it properly. When we could do a variant analysis of the most of the COVID, they are the people who could be able to document. So the point here is that when there is a challenge, we can definitely convert into an opportunity. And with this collaboration and cooperation, we can very well reach the level you want to do it. And this is particularly important in the current situation where your President Trump is creating a shivering across everywhere where 
there's a freeze in the grants or the pause in the grant, whatever you call it, the science is going to stop. But at least this situation where we need to collaborate. See, I'm very, very open in saying that in the Western world, you have a resources, including the financial resource and expertise. But in our part, we have a samples. We can reach any corner. The number which we can even unimaginable, we can able to do it in a short period of time. See, if you are able to do this collaborations, definitely we can do anything even when there is a resource constraints. And uh, another two, three things which I want to say is that, uh, see, when emerging and re-emerging, these are happening, uh, most of us will be able to know, see, we need to do a bigger surveillance and we need to create infrastructure. So these are the two things which will come across for an administrator like us, like how to pick up the cases earlier and how to treat them. This is our more important. But what is critically needed is that we need to have a mechanism to handle that pathogen. So this is where the research by your core research people like is very much essential, where we need to pick up how we can pick up those things earlier. What is the really quicker diagnostic kits which you can come out. What is the intervention? Either it could be a drug or a immunization, how quickly can you establish? So this needs a core research team where people like you from the microbiology background is definitely able to make a big advantage. This is one thing. Second, uh, when things are happening, uh, what I call it as in uh, the current situation, it's morely about uh, one health and climatic change. So this got a huge impact and definitely we need to work with uh, multiple partners. So it's no more a, either it is a science or from the Yale, but we need to work with different agencies because even from the COVID time, you'll understand that it is not only the health problem the public is facing. Health is getting affected, your mental health is become deteriorated, non-communicable diseases are getting aggravated, but beyond this, your economic challenges, your social challenges, the impact which he created on an education system is much, much bigger than what is the health issue. So definitely when the things like one health, climatic changes are having impact, this is a challenge. But at the same time, the opportunity is that the multiple players are now willing to support you. See, because they understand the value of the health. See, unless in other ways, they also involve, take the corrective steps, their business, their trade will not sustain. So this is the opportunity which we need to do it. And finally, the AMR, which is very close to your subject, definitely you will all handle it. This we call it as a big catastrophe. Anytime it may happen. But the two, three things which we can do it. We can do a surveillance. We can able to pick up those cases earlier. And also, we need to intervene in such a way that the antibiotics are still made workable and the, the so-called the pathogens are still made to kill it. So definitely the variations within the way in which your bacteria or virus acting will definitely give a leverage in which you can scientifically deactivate the pathogens. That is the ultimate. See, picking up the AMR is not a solution. The solution which you people are going to give it is much, much important. And I hope with this collaboration and support from each and every one of you, you will do it. Best wishes. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Now we will move on to the felicitation of our uh, distinguished speakers. I would like to request our honorable chief guest, Dr. Salva Vinayagam, to uh, honor five of our distinguished speakers. Dr. Rafiq Sekali. Dr. Guido Silvestri. Dr. Steve Deeks. Dr. Francois Willinger. And Dr. Rama Rao Amara.
I would now like to request our honorable chief guests, Dr. T. S. Selvaminayagam, Dr. S. Armstrong, Dr. S. Elumalai, and Dr. N. Anandavalli to, to help us release the ICER ID 2025 souvenir. <laughs>